Hi, I am Amir from Eternal Jerusalem giving you the news. So good morning everyone. Today we have a special blessing, a Shabbat Shalom blessing from the soldiers of the IDF. We visit, we visit him, visited them with uh, my family. And uh, so Shabbat Shalom to everyone in the United States. And now for the news. Today we have uh, whew, such uh, interesting news. By far the biggest story is uh, Messi. Uh, the greatest uh, soccer players of all time. Soccer is very popular in Israel. Everyone were uh, excited and expecting uh, them uh, to come. But BDS uh, made uh, big protests and today we know even uh, threatened uh, their lives. And uh, they said uh, eventually that they won't come. They cancelled. So now a big uh, fuss in Israel. And uh, suddenly in Israel there's a big question about the BDS. Uh, until today it was considered to be some kind of, uh, well, maybe a legitimate uh, kind of protest, but uh, now everyone is angry and uh, it's not like, uh, you know, some liberal uh, uh, musician or singer that won't come. Now, you know, it's mainstream, it's football, it's uh, soccer. Uh, in Israel we call it football. So it's uh, it now uh, now it's news. Now suddenly everybody is talking about the BDS in Israel. Now, for those of you who don't know, BDS is the boycott movement against Israel, and uh, they have been uh, doing everything they can to make uh, Israel um, isolated uh, in the world. Uh, crying don't buy uh, Israeli products, Israeli products are, uh, you know, uh, buying from Israel is a crime and uh, stuff like that. Um, one of the craziest thing about BDS is that they never speak about uh, maybe the Palestinians have uh, something to do with it, uh, I mean most of the people who uh, protest uh, in the name of the BDS are uh, left-wing, you know, uh, liberals. And they don't seem to mind that, uh, for example, in Palestine, women uh, have very little rights. In fact, a woman in Palestine is, is an object. If a man beats up his wife, the court has nothing to do about it because he has his rights, you know, like, uh, kind of like slavery. Uh, more than a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, you know, a, a woman is a man's property and he can do whatever he wants. Now, the liberals don't seem to care about that. And there's a lot of crimes, there's a lot of, uh, you know, civil rights uh, violations in the, in the disputed area, but somehow the, the liberals don't seem to care. They're saying that Israel is to blame for everything, and uh, everything that's happening in Gaza and therefore uh, even Messi himself that he was the one who, here you can see him play he was the one who initiated uh, the game and he wanted to come to Israel he eventually was the one who uh, decided to cancel and if you take a look, at least that's what they're showing in the newspapers you can see uh, the protesters with uh, bloody shirts, they took, uh, you know, Argentina soccer shirts, the team uh, covered them in blood and uh, saying that uh, the Gaza, uh, supporting Gaza and coming to Jerusalem is a crime. Now, Gaza is the only part of the disputed area that was liberated and again, here in Israel, we do not understand what do the Palestinians want from us. They wanted to be liberated and they were liberated. I mean, the people who are suffering and uh, have such, such difficult poverty, they are liberated. They are the only Palestinians that were liberated. So why is it our fault? We don't know. We really don't. And uh, here you can see France in the UN, the French uh, delegation also uh, voted against Israel and uh, saying that uh, all the violence 
in the region now is because of uh, Israel is not taking care of the people in Gaza and uh, the poverty is Israel's fault. But, you know, maybe you can explain this to me. I mean, the people in France know very well that Gaza, at least the ambassadors, they know that Gaza is not under Israeli rule. It's the only place in Palestine that is not under Israeli rule. So why are they blaming us for what's happening? What are you suggesting? We reoccupy Gaza to make them better, like in, the, in the Judea and Samaria, where the Palestinians are doing just fine. We really don't know, we don't understand what they want from us. I mean, we did everything you asked for. You are free, you know, the people that have uh, signs, uh, Israel is an apartheid, free Palestine. They're free, they've been free for years. For years. Why are you talking to us? You have problem, they have a uh, government, Hamas. Hamas is the official government elected by the people of Gaza. Now, I can understand the people of Gaza that uh, they have a problem with Hamas being their leaders. Trust me, you don't want to be there. Uh, the, the Hamas uh, regime is brutal and uh, not very, uh, how, how shall I say it? Civil rights is like uh, an amorphic uh, idea. It's, uh, it's, you know, it, it's, it's an idea, it's a concept. You can accept it, you can uh, not accept it, you know, it's like philosophical. It's not like uh, in Israel where the Arabs, the Muslims, they have rights. It's in the law. You know, in the occupied territories, in the disputed uh, territory, there's no such thing as human rights. It's a dictatorship. They do whatever they want. No one can stop them. And I can understand them that they don't want Hamas and they want to break out of uh, Gaza. But what, what does Israel got to do with it? I mean, if you want to ask, uh, ask us to come and help you, you can ask. What, 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 what is the point of all this? Here you can see the new kind of terror from uh, uh, Gaza is kites. They take kites and they strap uh, uh, firebombs, Molotov cocktails to their tail and they let them uh, fly in the wind into Israel and there are huge fires in the, the Gaza area. Here as you can see in the newspaper the burning fields Oh, it's such a mess. Here, you can see the fire uh, fighting teams. The fields that used to be fertile. You know, it was such a big achievement. How uh, Israel uh, took a place, you know, right around Gaza. The place around Gaza and inside Gaza, it's almost the same territory. But in the Israeli side, it's blooming. It's a very important agricultural uh, territory well in the other side of the fence in the Gaza side the Palestinian side it's desert now Israel has the technology to turn uh, the desert into a blooming place in Israel the desert is where most of the farming is taking place and now everything is burned by uh, Hamas uh, new kind of uh, kite terror it's, uh, it's horrible just horrible to see uh, let's see more news. Well, that's about it from this uh, newspaper. Let's turn to the other uh, newspapers. Again, you can see the fires from Hamas. And on the other side, you can see Bibi on his uh, tour in uh, Europe. Now, that's kind of funny because uh, Bibi met with uh, several uh, members of the EU the uh, European uh, Union, but, you know, when the foreign uh, secretary of the EU wanted to meet with him, he said, well, I'm sorry, I'll have to cancel, I don't have the time. So, why did Benjamin Netanyahu cancel uh, the meeting with the foreign uh, secretary of the EU? Well, 
in the newspapers there are many opinions uh, to each side, but uh, I think one of the most interesting articles that I found in the newspapers uh, this week, it says that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu now feels that the EU is so biased that it's, it's pointless. I mean, what they're saying is, and uh, this message was transferred by, uh, was delivered by, uh, you know, the people around the Prime Minister. What they are saying is that we do not believe that justice and common sense is behind this. We believe that uh, there are interests, uh, money, and uh, things that, uh, you know, are beside the, beside the point. And Israel has become, you know, the ultimate villain. Personally, I find it very dangerous because, first of all, for us as Israelis, we are used to it. But uh, think about it. If you reach a point where truth has no meaning, only interest, what is there to, to stop, you know, the people of interest? And as you probably know, in each one that's uh, watching us now, you know that you have politicians and uh, businessmen around you in your own country that, uh, what can I say, sometimes they let their interest uh, take the best of them. What is there to protect you? I mean, if you can take a country, and even though everyone knows that they're lying, and still, they come at you with uh, severe uh, accusations and they know that uh, what's happening in the Gaza is none of our fault. They know. I mean, uh, they are uh, professional politicians. They have uh, their counselors. They know the truth. And still, they take the BDS side and they say, oh, Israel is behind what's happening in Gaza. How is Israel... Uh, to be blamed for that and today there are people in Israel that are slowly uh, losing faith in what's happening in Europe some people believe that uh, Europe has made a decision to take the side of the Arabs and not the side of Israel as policy as tactics it's their strategy to gain more power in the global arena and it doesn't really matter what uh, Israel does or say. Uh, many Israelis are very troubled by this. And uh, we are uh, less open to, to hearing what uh, Europe has to say. And uh, the, 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 the danger behind this is that a lot of Europeans are saying, uh, you know, they, they can lead to a, a big solution, a true solution. You know, they have the power. And they are now losing it. They're losing their uh, grip on the, what's happening in the Middle East. And now, even though they're trying with BDS and with talks, and uh, it's pointless because Israel lost faith and we don't care anymore what they're saying. And that's a setback towards peace. Anyway, about the kites. Now there's a new unit in the Israeli army. As you can see it, Israel is using drones, <laughs> very small drones, and they uh, just collide in the helium balloons with the bombs or the kites with the Molotov cocktails strapped to them, and they intercept them. They're, 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 very, uh, they're very efficient, as uh, we find out. Now, believe it or not, these are actually civilians. The people who are fighting the kites are civilians and when the army saw that the civilians are so uh, capable they drafted them for a few days as reservists and now there's a military unit which is basically a bunch of civilians with uh, you know a hobby of uh, flying drones and they are the ones fighting the uh, incendiary kites as they will call them in Israel and they are very effective, so uh, Israel got it, uh, you know, got the act together pretty quickly. And uh, let's see what, uh, what we're going to get uh, next from uh, Hamas. But for now, uh, we do have an answer for uh, this kind of uh, crazy terror, you know. You send bombs, you don't even know where you're sending them. I mean, how can Europe accept that? 
it's it's a collective punishment on its worst possible uh, you know uh, aspect because you're throwing incendiary bombs uh, in order to light huge fires in settlements I mean you can burn children you can burn people you don't even know who you're hitting you can burn other Muslims they don't even know who are they uh, fighting and still they're firing but by the hundreds hundreds each day and when Europe saw that they said nothing absolutely nothing and that's very upsetting I mean if you want to condemn us okay but you should also condemn the other side right I mean Fair is fair, but uh, no, not much uh, fairness here. They just decided that Israel is to blame and that's it. The other side, everything is okay. Even though, of course, uh, you know, shooting uh, bombs over uh, the border, you don't even know who you're hitting. Of course, that is a major uh, war crime. And uh, for other news, uh, we are mostly in Israel now uh, interested in uh, what kind of uh, television would be best for the Mundial, the big uh, soccer match. That's mostly what Israel is uh, occupied now, the Mundial. So that's it from Israel. And let me give you some, uh, something to think about during this week. Can you have peace? Is humanity going to a place where lying becomes a legitimate, a legitimate tool when trickery and false uh, leaders they are the new trend in Europe now what kind of a world uh, are we building to ourselves? I mean, I can understand that they're saying look, we need to lie right now but this will bring a, a, a good, uh, this will give us, uh, you know, it's for a good purpose. But ask yourselves, will the lying stop? I mean, eventually what will happen is we will get this uh, very, uh, 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 very uh, assertive, very uh, uh, impressive leader who is a false leader, but everyone will follow him and they will say look we understand that he is false but it's for a good purpose how how can you stop him how can you control someone who you know from the very beginning that he is fooling you now that is something to think about do we want uh, false leaders even if we believe that they're gonna benefit us or is it better to uh, to believe in the truth, to know that you are being truthful and, uh, you know, really solve the problems, not going around them, not uh, looking for the easy escape, but really solve our problems. So, have a good week, everyone. You know, a good uh, Shabbat Shalom. By the time you'll see it, it will probably be the beginning of the week. Here from Israel, have a good, have a good week.